I'm Mike Costello, and I'm here with Dr. Iris Freelander, and we'd like to talk to you today about opening doors to guidance. I think all of us are interested in being guided and directed in our lives, and we all have decisions that need to be made. And uh, we speak a lot on this program about accessing our intuitive abilities and the abilities that we have to be guided and directed. And uh, I guess we can spend the next half hour talking about that, <laughs> Iris. Yes, because it's important that we be aware that we are seeking guidance because it's our intent. If our intent is to seek guidance, then we receive that guidance. And uh, when we meditate, we can do so many different things with a time of meditation. But one thing we can definitely do, and this is what we advise people in counseling, is to ask questions and listen for the answer. And to ask the question so it can be answered yes or no. And, and if they don't, if, if, if they're not accustomed to doing that, then they can always get the yes or no answer. And those are some ways that people can attune themselves to the higher energies, aren't they? They are. Uh Using meditation is, of course, a technique, and we spend a fair amount of time in this program and in our counseling and at the church center talking about meditation, and uh, we need to do that today. But there's also just the intuitive knowing that we can have in our daily lives, and, and when we go about the daily process of living, we can be assured of the fact that there is the accessibility of guidance that is always available to us. But I think so often we find ourselves, uh, especially in difficult times or challenging times or upsetting times, and of course we all have those emotional times, uh, feeling that, they're, that we're cut off from the guidance that we need to have. But in fact, it's our response to those uh, events in our lives that cut us off from the guidance that we need, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it's also our own lack of faith in, in knowing. And I don't mean like we need to have Christian faith or Jewish faith or Buddhist faith, but it's our own faith in the inner guidance that we are about to receive. And if we believe we're going to receive it, then, then we will. And there are those people who are metaphysically oriented who know that they're in touch with their guardian angel. They know they're in touch with someone on the inner planes of being who's helping them, a discarnate being who's lived on earth and no longer is on earth, but they're, help, they're helping and guiding. And then others feel that they're in touch with God supreme, creator God, or that they're in touch with a great master. And it could be any of those could be correct because it, 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 it's never just any one thing. But the guidance comes, the guidance is there, and our prayers go out as light. And of course, we pray briefly before meditating, and we ask for this guidance. And then, and if we believe it'll come, it'll come. And our great way shower said, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. So it's the believing, isn't it? It is. It's the believing and knowing that it's there. And I like that point that you just touched upon, which really has to do with it doesn't matter what faith tradition mm -hmm. uh, people come from, and it doesn't matter if people have no faith tradition. <laughs> that guidance is always there. And I think one of the things, and kind of stepping back from dealing with guidance on a personal level, we need to uh, look at, at other people's lives and understand that everyone receives guidance and direction at from different sources and I, I think we need to be vigilant about our own judgments about other people's guidance you know <laughs> so often we're so worried about what people are believing or we want people to believe the way that we believe and we spend a great deal of time talking about the fact that people are free to believe uh, of a myriad of different sources of different faith traditions different religions different uh, uh, political be uh, views and, and ethnic views and cultural views, all of those, all of that diversity simply strengthens us as persons. But we spend a lot of energy judging uh, so often uh, other people's source of guidance, and we need to be a little vigilant about that and let go of it, don't we? Yes, if we do indeed have that um, feeling or that idea, because, yeah, that's just as wrong as, as anything that we might do that's terribly wrong. Because to be judgmental is putting our own ideas ahead of the ideas of the other person. How do we know what they're thinking? And in my, as I teach, I, I say, 
you change your own mind every day or every week or every month. You, you don't have the same ideas uh, at one given time that you used to have at a future time. And so how can we criticize anyone else? How do we know where they're coming from? So we just have to accept. And that's part of the in our new thought way of thinking. To me, that's part of the beauty of it is that we can accept all diverse religions and ideas and be interested in what they're doing. I remember years ago, like it was 40 years ago, I wrote a newspaper column, and um, a weekly newspaper column, and I decided to interview uh, successful business people and ask them if they believe in meditation or if they practice meditation, and do they look to God before making a major decision? And it was very elementary, but I was just amazed and, and delighted that all those business people said yes, and they all happened to be men, I believe, at that time. Well, they all said yes, of course I look to a higher power. How do I, how could I not? And I know that you do in your work as a successful business person, but none of those men were also ministers, <laughs> and none of them were psychologists, and none of them had, had training. They were business people, purely. But they were, back then, 40 years ago, they were saying, yes, of course I do. And I think today people do, and they acknowledge, and of the, the people who are successful and think about their lives and think about their circumstances are more apt to do that, I think, in a definite, uh, decided way, and others just uh, wander into it indiscriminately somewhat. Mm -hmm. But there is this belief in a resource beyond ourselves. Mm -hmm. And as we believe in a resource beyond ourselves, we know that we can be guided and directed uh, in making decisions about our lives, whether they're small decisions or whether they're major business mm -hmm. decisions that affect the lives of many others. It is that inner knowing and the realization of the guidance and direction that's always accessible to us. And I know your life and my life, our lives are lived by, uh, by the reality of our understanding that we are guided and directed constantly. Mm -hmm. And by leaving that conduit or that channel open all of the time, we are able to know that regardless of what circumstance or situation comes into our life experience, we will be guided and directed and we'll have the information that we need to make the decisions that we need mm -hmm. to make and also to look at the experiences of life in the way that we need to look at them. And I think so often when we talk to people in counseling, so often it, it, it seems people feel like they have no control over <laughs> life when in fact we have all of the control over how it is we respond to circumstance and situation and how it is that we open ourselves to this higher power and to this higher realization of guidance and direction. Yes, and I think whoever does the counseling, the best they, the best they can ever do for their client or their, the person they're counseling is uh, to show them their options. And this is what, I know that's what we do. And, and this is, that's the way we really help people because people have to make up their own minds. They have to come to terms with their own lives and they have to know where, where they're going and, and make their decisions. But I think it's really a credit to mankind as a whole that we do live on faith as much as we do. And that's what it is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is. Let's talk a little bit about how we open the doors. How, you know, so often when we need guidance, of course we need guidance all of the time, <laughs> but when we are faced with difficulty, with challenge, with hurt, or, or with a perplexing problem that maybe mm -hmm. isn't a hurt at all, but some, a problem to which we, uh, we, or for which we seek a solution, mm -hmm. Uh, there's, of course, meditation and there's prayer, uh, there's centering, there's relaxation, there are a variety of techniques. But I guess the beginning point of opening that door is stepping back from the situation, isn't it? Yes, it is, to be objective. And we must be objective in any circumstance when we're, when we're making decisions. But the, the, the primary help that we get that I've Got received personally in my own life is to just ask questions and then hear the answers. And I've uh, I've told you prior to this about one time I was asking a question that was very important to me in my family life, and I saw the answers like a slideshow, and it was very it amazed me at the time because that had not happened before. But it wasn't a video movie; it was like a slideshow, and I saw these slides being shown to me of the other person's lives, people that I had never met even, but it showed me 
where the questions arose and then how they were handled in other circumstances that then impacted on my own life. And so I think that we can, again, the best thing we can do when we're working through problems is to just ask those questions. And f first of all, we need to be accustomed to attuning ourselves to divine energy regularly. And if we are accustomed to that then, and I know you mentioned so often of just centering throughout the day, and that is such a wonderful help. And those who are listening to us and don't do it might wonder, well, how do I center myself? That's a good question. We center ourselves just by being quiet and looking within and looking for and just reaching out to divine creator God. And it's, it's like saying a brief prayer and then waiting for an answer to, for those people who are not accustomed to, uh, to doing that. But we can all, every person can receive answers, their own answers. And personally, I think we're getting help from the inner, not only from Creator God, but from those angelic beings and those discarnate beings who have lived on earth and no longer are here, who come to help us. And I think they're available to help us. We pray to God, but then it's, the, it's like a signal goes out to those with whom we are attuned. And that's not my own personal idea. Matthew Ward, who gives information to his mother, and they've written books, um, Matthew Tell Me About Heaven, and Revelations for a New Era, he explained it that way, that they, uh, it's like a, a signal that they receive and they are at attention. And then they can be there in a flash. They can be there in a moment. So if we have the knowledge that this happens and the faith that it does, then we're all set to receive information as we need it. And if we want to test that information, then we can ask the questions in different ways, or we can go back at a later time and on the same subject, ask more questions. Mm -hmm. This issue of centering is something that uh, we talk uh, quite a bit about, almost as much as we talk about meditation. But this, uh, the idea of centering, and I am a person who believes in centering uh, always mm -hmm. or several times during the day. And that centering reality is really one of detachment, isn't it? I, yeah. That's the way I find the easiest mm -hmm. to, to describe it. And that's to detach from the circumstance or the situation and to center oneself in a presence or a power that's outside of the momentary mm -hmm. experience. Uh, in psychology, we might, we might talk about the beginning of processing or, deta or detaching from the experiential level or the sensory uh, levels. And that can be done anytime, anywhere, and we don't have to close our eyes or drop to our <laughs> knees to do it. Exactly. And in our culture, we know about the chakras now, where years ago people didn't know what a chakra is. Well, it's a force center in the human body, and there's seven major chakra centers. <clears throat> and the top one is at the crown of the head, so I think of centering as going as my energy starting at the root chakra at the base of the spine and going up the spine, um, past the second chakra, past the third, which is at the great apex of the liver, past the heart chakra, past the throat, past the brow, and then up to the crown. And it just happens just that quickly. Within, in a blink of an eye, you go very quickly so that your energies are gathered and then they're centered in that topmost chakra at the, the crown of the head, where the soft spot would be in a baby's head. And so then I'm reaching out. And we know that in death, we are attached. The silver. Everyone believes that we have a silver cord. Well, the silver cord is attached to at the uh, solar plexus chakra center, at the, cent, uh, at the navel area, and then at the heart center, located over the thymus gland, and then at the crown of the head which is located over the pituitary and pineal glands. And so that um, silver cord is attached to those three. According to other great teachers, and one is Max Heindel, who goes into that quite at, at, uh, in depth. And so I think if we know some of these things too, it's very helpful. It's not like, it's not like all a mystery. It's just like when a woman is having a baby, if she knows a little about the process, then the pain is less and the, the, the joy is greater because they know what to expect. 
I think when we know some of the things that happen in this um, various processes. Absolutely, and if we know the process and know how this centering dynamic operates, then we're able to access it more easily. Yeah. And uh, we'd like to pause at this point in the program, and when we come back, we'll pick uh, up this information of centering and uh, and uh, looking at the process of opening the doors. But we'd like to pause right now and offer you the opportunity to uh, receive some literature so that you can continue to study the ideas and concepts that we're sharing with you today. We would like to offer you the opportunity to receive one of these free booklets to further your understanding of the new thought message of confident living. Each month we will feature a different booklet which will be mailed to you free and postage paid. Simply address your request to Confident Living at P.O. Box 7726, Long Beach, California, 90807. Well, opening these doors really begins the process of, of inner guidance. And to open the door to being centered, to open the door to being at peace, to open the door to having faith, to open the door to all of the things that that create the, the mechanisms for us to be able to access this, this guidance is an important uh, aspect of learning, isn't it, Iris? Yes, it is. And the main aspect in the beginning would be the intent, because it's always our intent that makes a difference in every aspect of being. And um, when we go over in, in death in God's great country, we're not judged by God. We judge ourselves. And as we go through life, we're not judged by God. We judge ourselves. But if our, so we know that if our intent is to not hurt anyone, then the judging is far less severe. If our intent is malicious or hurtful deliberately, then the, it would be a more severe judgment, and then we would incur karma from that. But we, uh, we, we can always know that if our intent is for the highest, then we're not incurring any negative karma, and we are gaining that which we seek because it's always there all the time. Uh, that's an important concept to understand, that, that guidance and direction don't just come and go. Uh, it's a little bit like people believe that, uh, that good comes and goes. Mm -hmm. As the fact is that good <clears throat> flows all of the time, prosperity flows all of the time, health flows all of the time, happiness, joy, all of the good virtues and, and, and positive aspects of life flow all of the time. Now, there are different points in our, time, in our lives when we're, we cut off that flow, but, it, but the flow is always there, isn't it? And the flow and the reality of this guidance and direction is always accessible. And you just touched so beautifully on the fact that it's not something external that is judging us or cutting it off or stopping it. We're doing it ourselves. And that goes right to the core of what New Thought philosophy mm -hmm. is about and what our teaching is about. And that's personal responsibility, mm -hmm. isn't it? We are personally accountable and personally responsible for whether or not we are opening the channels and the doors to our own good and always connecting to the higher power, to the higher presence. Uh, God doesn't come and go, uh, <laughs> and good doesn't come and go, but our perception of God comes and goes, and our relationship changes based upon our perception, not in reality. And I think that's an important thing to understand and an important thing for our viewers to understand because it's not something we turn on or turn off. <laughs> the spigot is always running. It's just flowing abundantly. Yeah. And again, as the Wayshore said, life is, is, is made to live and, and life is made to live in, mm -hmm. a, in abundant supply. And yet we cut off the supply through our own negative thinking, through our own erroneous thinking, through our mistakes, and those things bring upon us the judgment that we have. It's not something out there that's, <laughs> uh, that's going to get us, and it's not God out there, and it's not uh, luck, and it's not all of the things that we often think, and it's not happenstance. It's really coming from us, isn't it? Yes, it always is coming um, from us and through us, and I would say through us. But it's but what you just said is so important that everyone realize that that divine principle is not just a divine principle, it's a divine reality 
and it's always there all the time, uh -huh. and we have but to draw from it. And I remember asking years ago, like 50, 60 years ago, I was lying in my backyard, and I was uh, making a whistle with my fingers with a blade of grass, and I was asking, and I was, it was an introspective time, I wasn't just playing, and so uh, I asked, what, um, what is the way, the path to God? And the answer came that all upward paths lead to God. And I would say all paths lead to God. They wouldn't just have to be upward. That's what I heard, mm -hmm. all upward paths. And also I was shown that, this is really crazy, but life is like a loaf of bread. It's all, and I saw this very beautifully finished loaf of bread, golden on top. And it's, life is like a loaf of bread. It's all there all the time. You have but to draw from it. And then it didn't say it's self-replenishing. But it was demonstrated that as you draw from it, it's self-replenishing. And so that has stuck with me all these years. Now, I don't think it was an accident that I received that information in that fashion because spirit speaks to us the way we can understand. And that was my comprehension at that time. And perhaps they would use a more sophisticated idea of getting the idea across to me today. Who knows? But that's the way it was presented. So when we... and. Also from that I learned, don't question. Don't question information you receive. Just say thank you Just and express gratitude. And two of the main things that we can ever do is to trust our own intuition, trust what's being given to us, because it's not necessarily our intuition, it's our receptivity, and, and to trust and to express gratitude. And yep. just say thank you, God, for everything. Absolutely. There, that's all we need to do. <laughs> and when we do that, the door's wide open, yes, isn't it? Exactly. And and then we're guided and directed. Mm -hmm. And th those that gratitude opens the door. Yeah. And and as you were just speaking, I was just reminded of how beautifully there you had a wonderful message of guidance and direction that was given to you as mm -hmm. a young girl. Sixty mm -hmm. years ago, you were a young girl. <laughs> and so a long time ago, but your guidance and direction came and you didn't question it. That's right. And you gave thanks for it. And you didn't try to over uh, over interpret it. And you didn't run out and get somebody to tell you what it meant. <laughs> you know, so often we want to get somebody to tell us what it means. But in fact, if we would just give thanks and accept the guidance that we have and act upon it. It's a yeah. wonderful thing. If we're guided and directed to do something, then we should do it. Yeah. And uh, so often, you know, people are so enamored with the information that they're given or intuitives are sometimes feel so proud of the information that they've received. And yet they don't do anything with it. And the mm -hmm. fact is that when information is given to us, when guidance and direction is given to us, if we give thanks for it, if we accept it from the source and in the spirit in which it's given, then the channel is open, will be guided and directed in wonderful and magnificent ways. And then I'm just thinking of a story, Charles Fillmore, who was the founder of Unity, who was always very cautious in his uh, teaching of intuitive uh, uh, talents and, and, and seeing and so forth. And on one occasion, someone had come to him and had told him that, uh, that a specific individual had had a heart attack the night before, unbeknownst to this individual. And the person who was telling the story told Mr. Fillmore, I had a dream that this gentleman had had a heart attack. And when I woke up this morning and I received the news, indeed, he had had a heart attack. And Mr. Fillmore said, well, when you received that news, what did you do with it? And the man said, well, nothing. I was just so blessed to have received it. Well, Mr. Fillmore's response was, well, you received that news or you received that information. And what you could have done and should have done was give thanks for receiving it and sent prayers of help and strength to the person who needed it. So the me it wasn't the, the value of just <laughs> receiving it, you were to act upon to it. To do something. Exactly. And we don't get the we don't get guidance and direction mm -hmm. just so that we can while away the hours <laughs> or we can be impressed with our own abilities. We get guided and directed so that we can use that guidance yeah. and direction. And it, it works on a very uh, a very practical level. If we're guided and directed in a decision that we should make in business or in finance or in our family, if we're guided and directed that we should pick up if we have a feeling that we should pick up the telephone and call someone, then pick up the telephone and call them. Mm -hmm. and and exactly. act upon it. And yet so often 
we're so interested in our own abilities <laughs> to receive this guidance or information because guidance and direction comes to us always. And if we would just open the door and leave it open and act upon it, then we'll find that more and more will be given to us and we'll come to know more fully and completely the ways that we should go, the decisions we should make, the things that we should say, and we'll be given ways in which we can come to the aid and the help of others and how we can enrich our own lives as well. Yes, and if we each look back on our own lives, we can see how we've, we've been there many, many times where we received information and then acted on it. And the person that we contacted was so grateful that we've contacted them. And I'm sure everyone listening can uh, have, the same, have had the same experiences because we all do. Mm -hmm. And so that should impel us then to impress us to do that over and over. And just a quick phone call or a jot a, a note off to someone or to send something that suddenly something we're reading reminds us of another person, just to quickly put it in the mail, it lifts the spirits of the other person. And it's, a, it's something that we can each do. And it's like we're being God's hands then Amen. to lift the spirits of another person. I wanted to say uh, another thing that one of the main things we need to do, and I've heard you say this so many often in your lectures at church, is to not ask why. That's so important, that we not ask why, that we just accept that whatever it is we receive, and it's okay to ask why if it's part of the set of the conversation with the inner planes, but to not worry about why did this happen to me, because just know, we can all know that those we love are going to die, those we love are going to be ill, those things are going to happen that we can't get a handle on, that we can't possibly know why they've happened. And it's, it's a futile, an exercise in futility just to try and figure it out. And it's, it's not, uh, it's self-defeating. So to not be wondering about why things happen to other people, and that's one thing that a lot of New Thought people do is they will often uh, try to figure out why someone got sick. They'll try to figure out things in other people's lives. And to me, that's voyeurism. It's mm -hmm. not really uh, uh, ethical, is it? Absolutely. We need to let go and let life be what it is. Don't ask why, but open the doors to our great good. Open the doors to the presence and power of God. Open the doors to our ability to do good and wonderful things for others. And as we do that, our lives are enriched and the lives of those around us are enriched. And we'd like to leave you with the thought that the doors to your guidance are always open if you let go of judgment and if you are thankful for every aspect of your life. We hope that the information that we've shared with you has been useful and we look forward to seeing you next time. My husband Iris would like to extend a cordial invitation for you to join them this Sunday morning at 11 a.m. for our weekly celebration service at the beautiful Seaport Marina Hotel at the corner of Pacific Coast Highway and 2nd Street, adjacent to the Marina Pacifica and Marketplace Shopping Centers. It will be a guided meditation, prayers, spirited music, and a dynamic, life-changing new thought message. Please join us this Sunday. You will be warmly welcomed into the company of like-minded, positive, and uplifting people. And remember, whatever your dream, whatever your vision, you can attain it through confident living.